Hello, welcome to Emotional Badass, where Moxie meets Mindful. I'm your host, Nikki Eisenhower, life coach and psychotherapist. And on today's episode, I'm discussing self-love through poems with Rupi Carr and Maya Angelou. Self-love is one of those words that starts to lose its meaning, just like the word good. We use it so much in self-development that it starts to mean almost nothing. So what is self-love? To me, self-love is the practice of our worth. When our worth is low, self-love as a practice is low or maybe even non-existent. When worth is high, when we know we are valued by our own self, we act in accordance with that worth. We self-love actionably. We command respect internally and externally, and we walk away from what no longer serves us, head held high. In healing, we don't wait for worth and then act in self-love. Rather, we begin to invite and practice self-love to grow our worthiness. The word selfish really has a bad rap. When we have proper boundaries with people who overtake or overuse us energetically or even more tangibly in our day-to-day lives, the accusation of, wow, you're so selfish now. Or therapy has made you selfish. I don't like the new you. These are statements meant to shame us into old ways of being that served the other person. Don't just take my word for it. Look to your own experience. In my own experience, I can look back and see that most times I was accused of being selfish in this shaming way. The other person was projecting their own energy vampireness onto me, upset with me, mad at me for finally figuring out I needed a boundary. I needed to do something different. One of my sayings you may have heard me say before, if you work with me or if you've listened to the show from the beginning, is that the word is self-ish. I'm supposed to be ish about myself. If I'm not ish about me, who the hell is going to be about me if not me? Know that as you gain self-love momentum, it does get easier over time to not allow people to get into your head or make you doubt your self-care and lose that commitment to yourself. I want to talk to you about poetry today. I don't think I've done this on the show yet. Poetry is defined as literary work in which special intensity is given to the expression of feelings and ideas. There's usually a distinctive style, a rhythm. I wrote so much painful poetry as an adolescent and young adult. Now, if I do write in such a way, it's lighter because I'm lighter. Expression helps us heal. Expression moves our experiences through the body and out. It helps us make sense, make meaning. And when we do so, we can really put things down, put them away, be finished with them and move on. I want to share some poetry from Rupi Kaur, R-U-P-I-K-A-U-R, And one of my favorite spiritual mothers you hear me talk about all the time, Maya Angelou. I'm going to share a very famous poem of hers that you've likely heard at some point. And of course, I want you to listen to the beautiful words that these wise women have written. But I'd rather you feel the message, feel what the words do to your body, to your heart, to your mind, to tension in your jaw, to tension at the shoulders. What is the experience of someone else's poetry, if that makes sense to you? 
And when I read Maya's poem, I'll probably get choked up because I remember finding her phenomenal woman poem. Gosh, maybe even as young as 12. I'd have to really map that out and think about that. But somewhere between 12 and 15, and I'd read it over and over and over again. What really caught me about the poem was that she was celebrating herself. She was lifting herself up. She was talking about what it means to be a woman and to move through the world. And I knew that when I read her words, when I felt her words and her message, I knew that it was a healthy message. I knew that it was right. I felt it in my bones. I was puzzled with wonder in a very intriguing way. Because I had been taught to celebrate yourself in such a way, to say that you're wonderful. That's bad. Shame, shame. Selfish. Play it small. So it struck me at that age when we're so spongy. We're sponges anyway if we're highly sensitive, especially if we're empaths. So during that precious time in childhood when we're developing, when we're seeing the world for the first time, first experiences, making connections that we've never made before. These things can fascinate. They can take us over. And Maya Angelou's phenomenal, phenomenal woman was a poem that did that for me and to me. I'm going to start by reading from Rupi Carr's book, The Sun and Her Flowers. Now, I stumbled across this book. I did not know of this poet. This is now a New York Times bestseller. And she's amazing. So this is a very modern poet. She is alive right now, y'all. And I picked up this in a little shop in the Santa Fe Arts District here in Denver called Candelaria. It's now one of my favorite books to just pick up, thumb through, and feel. Her poems don't have titles. I'm reading from pages 104 and 105, two separate poems. The first one from the sun and her flowers. When I hit the rock bottom that exists after the rock bottom and no rope or no hand appeared, I wondered, what if nothing wants me because I do not want me? I am both the poison and the antidote. I'm going to read it again because if you're like me, you're going to hurry up and stop and rewind to be able to listen, to be able to sink in. When I hit the rock bottom that exists after the rock bottom and no rope or hand appeared, I wondered, what if nothing wants me because I do not want me? I am both the poison and the antidote. I can't imagine that there is a highly sensitive person alive who has not had this experience of hitting an even lower rock bottom than what we thought was rock bottom and having the realization that it all comes down to me wanting myself. In that moment, we let go of the expectation of white knights to come and save us. And in those moments, we decide to fight for our lives when we're depressed, when we're down. In those moments, we surrender to the idea that someone else will come and save us and make it better. And we reach up and we start to climb out of the hole. This is why we have this cultural knowing now that often we have to hit rock bottom and hope we bounce. The thing about a rock bottom is that it's wherever you stop and have this realization. So if you're having a hard time right now, have you been secretly waiting for white nights? What happens to your life if you stop, look in the mirror and say, it's me. I will choose to want me. And what if this changes everything? I don't know what you feel. But I feel moved. I'm going to go on and read the next one that I have picked out for you that happens to be right on the adjoining page of Rupi Carr's The Sun and Her Flowers. This is page 105. First, I went for my words. 
the I can'ts, I won'ts, I am not good enoughs. I lined them up and shot them dead. Then I went for my thoughts, invisible and everywhere. There was no time to gather them one by one. I had to wash them out. I wove a linen cloth out of my hair, soaked it in a bowl of mint and lemon water, carried it in my mouth as I climbed, up my braid to the back of my head. Down on my knees, I began to wipe my mind clean. It took 21 days. My knees bruised, but I did not care. I was not given the breath in my lungs to choke it out. I would scrub the self-hate off the bone till it exposed love, self-love. When I read her poems, I feel like they're pouring into me. I'm going to read this one again. First, I went for my words. The I can'ts. I won'ts. I am not good enoughs. I lined them up and shot them dead. Then I went for my thoughts, invisible and everywhere. There was no time to gather them one by one. I had to wash them out. I wove a linen cloth out of my hair, soaked it in a bowl of mint and lemon water, carried it in my mouth as I climbed, up my braid to the back of my head. Down on my knees, I began to wipe my mind clean. It took 21 days. My knees bruised, but I did not care. I was not given the breath in my lungs to choke it out. I would scrub the self-hate off the bone till it exposed love, self-love. Just let that marinate for a moment. Can you feel that? What does it do? Does it pour inside of you the way I feel it pour inside of me? Does it clean and clear something out? Some kind of haze? Does something get crisper? Or just more real? Do you feel more powerful? Do you delight in your strength of femininity? What happens when you allow yourself to digest a powerful poem? Okay, I'm going to read one more from Maya Angelou. This is her very famous, phenomenal woman. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman phenomenally phenomenal woman that's me men themselves have wondered what they see in me they try so much but they can't touch my inner mystery when i try to show them they say they still can't see i say it's in the arch of my back the sun of my smile the ride of my breasts the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. 
When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. I want to thank all of you who listen to the show, who are out there in the world, bettering yourself, developing yourself, letting go of what no longer serves you. When you do so, you subconsciously give other people who see you, who interact with you, subconscious permission to grow and develop themselves. There is a butterfly effect to healing, to growing, to maturing. Thank you for being our marketing team and spreading this show all over the world. If you want to sign up for the Boundaries course, you can come do that now. Sign up is open at EmotionalBadass.com or NikkiEisenhower.com. You can use code EARLYBIRD21 to get a significant discount. If you're on the Patreon, use the discount that is pinned for you at the top of our page. That's going to be the biggest, best discount. Or you can use a payment plan. So you can choose anything that serves your need if you're interested in learning from me when I teach live this October. It's like a big college classroom, and I invite you all to come if you're interested in learning how to have internal and external boundaries that can serve your life. I want to thank and give shout outs to these Patreon producers of the show. We cannot do the show alone. We work very hard to make the show sound clean and clear and crisp. And we have released an episode without missing a single week in over three years. When you come support us at Patreon and drop us two or five or 10 or 20 bucks, you are voting for the show to be commercial free. You are supporting us and honoring the healing vibe of the show and keeping commercials out. So thank you so very much for giving us the opportunity to honor the healing vibes of the show in such a way. I want to thank Lynn Angelic. I want to thank the letter B. I want to thank Rachel and Veronica and Jesse for joining us on Patreon and supporting all that we do. I want to thank Amber, Worley, Frankie, Judy, Angelique, Emily, Jessica, Fabs, and Amberlyn. When you join our Patreon, you get a shout out. And don't worry, I don't shout out your whole name. We give you an opportunity to let us know how you would like your name shouted out on the show. When you join the Patreon, you immediately get access to over 80 hours of audio and video content that I've been putting together and Chris has been working on and we have been releasing as a team for years. That content is not available anywhere else publicly other than at patreon.com backslash emotional badass. Every month we do a video live stream Q&A where you can ask me anything. June's topic was elephant in the living room. July's topic is forgiveness. You can ask me anything about forgiveness. If you're mad at forgiveness, you can ask me about that. Anything in your story, anything in my story, anything about therapy, anything about spirituality, why they push forgiveness, anything that you want, forgiveness. Come join and ask me a question. I'll be happy to answer it. On the topic of forgiveness, I will share a little bit of my story from how I went from I'm never going to forgive to total forgiveness. It has been quite the journey, and I did never think I'd get there. So if you want to hear more about that and learn more about me or your story or how to heal and grow, come check out the Patreon. Um, I'm curious to find out at Patreon what you guys thought about this episode. It's the first time that I've shared poetry. I'm super curious to know, how did you like that? Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. And if that's outside of your comfort zone, I am happy to pull out a chair and serve you some tea to try out some new things. In healing, that's a big part of what we do. We open to different experiences. So this precious nervous system that we're trying to heal and get calmer and more centered and more grounded can have soothing experiences, releasing experiences. If you're new to the show, it might be a surprise to learn that healing can be 
gentle and easy and doesn't have to be sort of crying and dying and getting your story out. That's certainly a part of it, but that's not all of it. So I hope this opens some of you up to some new, different ways of being and moving through the world and opening to feeling so that the system can feel some different things. Isn't that what it's all about? Light and love. I'm an emotional badass. You're an emotional badass. And together we are where Moxie meets Mindful. I will see you right here next time. Take care. Bye-bye.